We are here with Michelle Elizabeth, CEO and founder of Hollywood Beauty Awards and LATF publisher, as well as former NASA scientist, Innovation Award honoree, and inventor of the incredible hair regrowth helmet, Theradome Tamim Hamid. Welcome, everybody. Hey, hey guys, how are you? As you can see, Michelle is wearing the Theradome helmet currently, and I understand that you were introduced to the helmet through a pitch. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, three years ago, you know, my hair has always been super important to me, but three years ago, I received this pitch uh, from a company called Theradome, and it talked about how it grew your hair and made your hair strong, and, uh, you know, it was the miracle cure for anybody who cares about hair, especially people like me who color their hair regularly. So it was three years ago, I uh, requested the, uh, the helmet, I got it, and I started uh, working it uh, several times a week. And after about four months, you know, I realized uh, a considerable change in my hair, in my hair loss, because every time I would go to have my hair colored, uh, it would be handfuls of hair that would uh, come out of, uh, you know, of the brush. So suddenly it was less and less, and my hair got stronger. Uh, it grew faster as well, which was really uh, great. Uh, you know, f especially for somebody who's had, um, who's always had a problem with hair. I, at first it was bad relationship, and uh, then it was breast cancer. And, uh, you know, my hair has always been a main factor in my life. It's just very, very, very important to me. So I was overjoyed when I realized that Theradome existed. So we, we uh, met uh, Tamim. We asked him to come to the office to do an interview. He was voted uh, the Innovation Award, which he got by the board. And uh, here he was. So he taught us a lot of things about the Amit and... Um, there is a lot of stuff on the market, but I've tried a lot of things. You know, I'm a trier. <laughs> and this is the only thing, and I'm not joking. This is why I'm wearing it, not because we're doing this interview, but because it does work and because I'm at, my session is actually a 620 second session. Was it a struggle to bring a Theradome to life? Yes. Um, well, you know, it's, I think it's a conglomeration of many skill sets that I think that I was lucky enough to have being in biomedical engineering uh, and also being at NASA working on lasers for the space shuttle program. Um, we never really applied lasers on the human body for the space shuttle program, but it was, um, but we, we did have lots of different lasers, you know, the, the really hot lasers that, that cut or cauterize. And, and then, um, then this type of laser that uh, we actually came up with, uh, with the device. And this is actually, we grow these lasers right here in Silicon Valley. And I happened to, um, you know, kind of come up with a solution. And then I figured out, oh, wow, this would be a really good application for hair loss because it's, I could put lots of lasers on it and inside a helmet kind of type of device without no heating because heat is the worst thing that you can do as, as most hairstylists will know and most chemistry people know that when you apply heat to a hair, uh, it actually, or, you know, you apply heat to any ingredients, it changes the, uh, you know, formation uh, in the you know molecules of that particular. It changes what's called state of the device. So, so you don't want to ever change the state of your hair. So that was the challenge. The challenge was getting this through the FDA uh, process, making sure that how do you present something brand new, just like almost. Uh, you know, if I told you guys that it, ten years ago that you have a, you know, you'll have a device one day that you can, you'll be looking at it 400 times a day. You'll be, you know, getting your GPS, you'll be getting your email, you'll be getting your, how you do transactions. You'd be telling me, no way, this, I would never have a device like this. But today, 10 years later, everybody, even my grandmother has a device. Uh, our goal is to have a, um, you know, uh, a low cost device that people can wear almost as um, you know, similar to um, as ubiquitous as a hairdryer. That's, that's our goal. How many years did it take you to uh, come up with a Theradome? 
Well, it took me about three years um, of just uh, working on this laser, the, just working on how to get this laser going. So then about two more years to get it through the FDA process uh, because, you know, the FDA has never seen anything like it. We were the first ones. Uh, and, you know, when you're first at something, you get yeah. guys more and that's what happened. So five years and then, then the rest of the time has been launching this. A few months ago, I know you struck a deal uh, with Costco. Yes. And you were doing very, very well with them. Uh, but what's been going on since we had this mandatory quarantine? I mean, wh how is Stardom doing there? Well, luckily, um, you know, luckily we're doing really well. I mean, um, we're not doing as well as the toilet paper industry right now because you know, I, guess, I guess if we if we gave everybody a toilet paper and a Theradome helmet, maybe uh, sales might be different. But but our sales have not slowed down since uh, this this imposition uh, occurred, you know, with the COVID-19 thing. But we, we, we've been selling quite steadily, uh, in fact. And because I think people are at home, they're stressed out, they don't know what to do. And then, you know, th this is, um, they're losing hair because, uh, you know, stress is a big indicator of, of uh, what's happening. And, you know, lo losing hair is, is one of the, um, uh, one of the results. So we built a lot of devices beforehand uh, we normally do that and it just happens to be the timing where um, the Chinese New Year actually was around Feb you know ja late January February so um, you know we we made sure that you know since we're we built everything here in the United States we wanted to make sure that you know everything was built that there was no supply chain issues we are back up thank God uh, as of last week with limited, uh, you know, all of our manufacturing, uh, the people have to be about six feet apart. So instead of having like, you know, 20 people, we can only have like 10 people just because of the space regulation that's that's been imposed here in Silicon Valley, California. Millions of people are under major stress due to the situation that we are uh, experiencing now. And this results in air loss. Where does hair loss really come from? What's happening in the body that you start losing your hair? So there are many factors for hair loss, but one of the major ones is actually, you know, uh, hair is actually the, the last thing your body needs. Um, and, you know, it's actually hair and nails, and that's the first ones that go. Uh, the body really uh, is trying to protect what's called the core. And, you know, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver, that's what, when something is compromised, whether it's due to the central nervous system being in a stressful situation, your heart rate's going, or you have diabetes, you have cardiovascular disease, all these things take up energy right up here. And then the core protects, it, the body protects the core. And then, so it lets go of any kind of maintenance to the hair and nails. That's why when you go to a doctor, you know, they look at your hair, they look at your nails, and they say, okay, you know what, there's something going on because uh, something is actually happening here that's causing everything to let go. It's almost, uh, I would look at it as a good example for that would be like climbing Mount Everest. If you climb Mount Everest, you go up to about 18, 20,000 square uh, feet elevation. And the people there, what happens is they get, um, you know, their fingers turn blue, their, you know, ears turn blue, everything. So the body's trying to get rid of everything that is not necessary for the core. And the same thing happens. So as, as somebody slowly, and I hate the word, I hate to use the word dying, but as you're, as you're being compromised in health, The body gets rid of everything, the feet, uh, you know, the ears, everything, even the nose. You see guys with no nose when they get, come back from Mount Everest because it's been, it doesn't need any more blood flow. So anyway, that's, the, so stress induces that, um, you know, and other underlying medical conditions. That's why whenever we tell, whenever we see somebody with hair loss, it's like, yeah, definitely wear this helmet because it will Uh, subsidize whatever the body is not doing, which is trying to take care of the hair. But go and get, go see a physician. Uh, iron deficiency is probably the number one thing for women. Ah. Uh, if you can get, uh, and that's probably solves about 80% of the problem. If they can get more iron into their diet, 
that's probably uh, very, very important. And and for guys, it's usually zinc. And, you know, if you can get more zinc in there. And if you have some kind of underlying medical condition, it's, it's good to go see a physician or some kind of trichologist. And they'll get you set up with the right, you know, usually it's a nutrition or supplement. Or it could be something um, a little bit more serious. Yeah, because uh, uh, pregnant women after pregnancy, they also experience, most of them experience loss, hair loss. Well, yeah. The, the reason why uh, women lose um, hair is that there's three hormones that are really peaking. They're, you have beautiful hair when you're pregnant. And that's because there's about three hormones. There's uh, follicle stillimating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and progesterone. Those three hormones are, are in its peak during pregnancy, and then they, they actually slam down uh, two or three months after pregnancy. So the hormones that are really there to protect your skin and nails and, and hair are no longer there, and that's why people have to supplement afterwards. It's like uh, a lot of women take prenatal vitamins uh, before uh, pregnancy, and or sorry, during pregnancy, right at the beginning. They should be continuing to use the prenatal vitamins after pregnancy as well, because that's when when their body needs it as much. So it's, one was for the baby at the at the you know first or second, third trimester, but at the fourth trimester should be taken care for the um, for the for the women. So hair loss does not discriminate in age. It doesn't matter if you're 25 or 35 or, or 75. Yeah, in, in most cases, but 93% of people uh, suffer from a condition called endogenetic alopecia. Endogenetic alopecia is the one that you get the male pattern baldness and the female pattern baldness. Those are, are, are definitely, you know, you, you know that's, that's not age-related. And it really depends on if you are very affected by it. And it's usually caused by a fungi called Malassezia fervor. And Malassezia is the, um, that's why Head & Shoulders is the number one shampoo in the world since 1950, because uh, it's there to uh, kill that Malassezia fervor. So um, when people are allergic to that, um, to, to that shampoo, because it does, it does have a sebum production uh, effectiveness. People get oily hair or dry scalp. Those are the effects of that malassezia fervor. Malassezia fervor is actually also the same same um, uh, fungi that's on your feet, what's called athlete's foot. It's the same uh, fungi that's um, in the genital area, which is um, you know, usually, um, like uh, they call it for guys, they call it jock itch or whatever. And then uh, for women with large breasts, it's underneath their, um, the same fungi is uh, uh, underneath that. And then on top of the head. So it lives amongst us very well. And it loves uh, heat and moisture. So when you have a lot of heat and moisture, and as you know, um, when, when somebody takes a temperature of your, of your scalp, you, you, you check right here because there's a lot of heat up here. We're almost like a chimney. And then this is where, and then when, the, when you have lots of hair at the beginning, you, um, you have a lot of moisture and a lot of heat. And that's why you, you never see guys that are bald with dandruff because they have no more, um, there's no more heat up there because all their hair is gone. When their hair is gone, no more dandruff. So anyway, that's a whole physiology of, of um, how um, hair works. You work with a lot of doctors. Who do you work with primarily besides a company like Costco? I mean, I know your business is mainly uh, with doctors who are into uh, hair reconstruction. Uh, we work um, a lot with hair restoration physicians all around the world. We, we're probably in, in, you know, I would say in the thousands of the hair loss uh, clinics and um, you know also with hair loss experts these are people that are not physicians but you know they're in the hair loss business but the hair loss um, especially the hair transplant people uh, they really enjoy our product and be able to do that because what happens is that our lasers can help them before the surgery because if you, if you think about it, if you're going to do 2,000 hair transplants, you're actually making about 4,000 holes. So you have to take 2,000 hairs from the back and then 2,000 hairs, new hair holes in the top. So that's 4,000 holes. So that's a lot of trauma to the scalp. So what our helmet does 
is that it prepares the scalp for all of the, um, you know, um, injections of, and also um, all of the, um, you know, removal of the, uh, the tissue to get the donor and the transplant hair inside the scalp. And then it helps with what's called angiogenesis. It helps the, the donor hair to um, hurry up and accelerate the healing process. We can accelerate that. And then the third thing what we can do with the hair restoration physicians and, and all that is that uh, it's great that you have 2,000 new hairs, but unfortunately the neighborhood hairs, the, you know, the, uh, the hairs that are right next to the healthy hairs that was there before gets traumatized. So, so that, uh, that's, uh, some people call that, you know, shock loss or whatever, but, but we tried, our helmet protects the neighbor hairs, which were, uh, which were not involved in the hair transplant and the new hair. So you want something to, uh, be affected for the existing hair and the new hairs both. And that's what we can do because we can do both at the same time. My last question is about, you know, many uh, stylists, colorists, beauty professionals have been impacted by uh, COVID-19, but uh, you don't hear much about it. For some reason, they are the forgotten of, uh, you know, and yet, and, you know, when I look at myself every day and I see this, yeah, yeah. It, and the helmet is making it grow faster, <laughs> you can't everything yeah so we understand that um that you're going to be collaborating with the professional beauty association which is the largest uh, membership association for beauty professionals hairstylists colorists estheticians nail technicians makeup artists across the u.s which is a lot of people and a lot of people that need help they're unable to work right now um they can't do house calls their salons are closed so they have no means of income so we understand they've started a COVID-19 relief fund and Theradome is going to, uh, to come in and make a big difference in a big way. So, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. You're right that, you know, these are the forgotten people that, you know, people do see. And there's not one voice for all these uh, affected individuals, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, there's restaurants and, you know, hairstylists and all these people are just, uh, you know, they don't have a voice in the industry. Um, we do want to contribute with the uh, Professional Beauty Association, um, the COVID-19. I think that everybody, you know, a portion of our sales moving forward uh, will go towards that fund because we we do think that you know um, if anybody's a hair expert, I would say that all of you know three about let's say two hundred and eighty million people go to a hairstylist or a, and these are the people that are professionals. Dermatologists are not the professionals for hair. Well, who's the professionals for hair? People go to their hair is the stylist. They're for us, for our hair company. We feel that the stylists are the experts in hair. And we want them to be, um, you know, taken care of during this time because they will take care of your hair. And that's the first person people will say, hey, uh, how's my hair looking? And they'll tell you, hey, your, look, your hair is looking great. Or, you know, or uh, hey, something, you, you've done something nice. You've done something different with your hair. They're the ones that notice. We know that they have um, a lot of members that they have either emails or their contact information. So we've sent out, uh, you know, emails to all, of the, all the ones in our, in our customer base that we know they can't see patients. Oh, sorry, they can't see clients at their, um, at, their, at their salons. So we've offered free drop shipping for all of them. So that way you can contact, uh, you know, a hairstylist can contact and say, hey, definitely use the Theradome. They get a percentage of, of the sales and, you know, they don't have to lift a finger. Come to our website, uh, www.theradome.com and you can um, email us at sales at theradome.com and we will take care of you. So thank you, uh, Tamim and Michelle. Really uh, educational, informative talk and conversation about science and beauty, about COVID-19 and how Theradome is helping. So uh, thank you so much. And we will talk to you when all this is over. <laughs> all right. It'll be over soon. Thanks, Pamela. Thank you. Thank you.